Hello everyone, my name is Uli Ehlert. Uh, I have the joy of giving a talk today in this virtual com conference about an individual case, about an individual using AAC, um, and specifically the mechanical aspects of mounting and positioning her AAC equipment. Um, the person that who I would like to introduce is Nele Dirks, a young lady living in the southwest of Germany in a town called Freiburg, which is located at the Black Forest. Maybe you have heard about the Black Forest so far. Beautiful area, but quite remote. Um, I know Nele since about 15 years. And over the years, I got to knew, know her very well. Um, she is living in an inclusive housing living project called the Vaubanese. Um, in the same project um, is a, an AAC expert living who I'm also friend with, Lars Tiedemann. And Lars has been working with Nele since Nele was in second grade or something. So they are quite close to each other and I am close to both of them. We have met over and over again. I was a working colleague of Lars for a couple of years. He might be known to somebody, uh, to, to some of you um, by his authorship for AAC vocabularies. Um, anyway, these are persons close to my heart and I try to make sure that I meet Nele once or twice per year, at least when there is no freaking pandemic around. So last time I met her was um, last summer when I visited her in, in Freiburg. Um, so, and as I know her quite well, I'm uh, quite aware of her residential situation, of all the solution that she's using because I spent so much time with her. So I know her situation much better than the situation of other customers. Why am I mentioning the word customers? Yes, I'm representing a company, a company called Rehadapt. Um, in this company, we develop and produce uh, mechanical elements, mounting systems for assistive technology, primarily AAC devices. Um, this sounds very specialized. Still, this field is so large and it's so complex that we work at it with uh, about 50 employees. We deliver in all parts of the world somewhat between 35, 40 countries so far. Basically everywhere where uh, high-tech AAC devices are being used. Um, but I don't want to brag about the company and um, very abstract things. I want to introduce Nele Dirk's very individual specific situation. So how to, um, how to do that, what order to find I think the first most intuitive thing that comes into mind when you think about positioning an AAC device for an AAC user is thinking of, well, she spends um, time in the wheelchair, how do I fix the device to the wheelchair? So we start with the mount that Nela is using at her outdoor wheelchair. This outdoor wheelchair that you can see in this picture right now um, can be tilted, so she lies back. And so you see one of the first requirements when you position this device, the device is using eye control. It only works well when it has a certain defined distance and position towards the face of the user. And when the user is in a different position, we have to make sure that the device follows uh, to keep that distance. So when we mount to a wheelchair like this, we have to find a mounting spot um, that allows the mount to also move with the entire seat. It works quite well um, with this mount on this chair. Um, it was not too hard to find in this case, uh, to find the right mounting spot. A little harder is the fact that Nele is a very active young lady. She does a lot of things. She goes hiking a lot and she lives in an area where hiking is just a dream to just give you an imagination. This is the beautiful black forest. And, you know, if you're there, first of all, it's one of the spots with the best weather in Germany. Um, and then this fantastic scenery. Um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd be hiking every day. 
Um, that's what Nele does. Um, and the wheelchair supplier, the supplying company, they are frequently so uh, turned off by how much strain um, Nele and her assistants, or Nele and Lars, put onto the wheelchair when they go cross country and hiking. Now, as you can see, the device that Nele is using is a large one, it's a heavy one, and she goes cross country um, and quite steep paths. So we have to make sure that this mount really is sturdy and it holds well. Um, it works well. Uh, the Monty 3D mount that we are using there um, is taking all the strain it's holding. It has never let her down so far. Um, so that's that part of her need to position her AAC device uh, could be checked off quite, e quite easily and quite efficiently. Now there are other parts um, besides hiking. She does a lot of activities. She plays in theaters. Um, she reads aloud to uh, specifically to, to young kids um, to familiarize people with the idea that also people not using her own voice do have something to say. Um, so in all these activities, um, she needs a solution to make sure her AAC device is present and available. Um, that is achieved with her outdoor and out and about wheelchair. We also have a indoor therapy activity chair, um, which is the solution that she uses most of the time when she is in an active mode at home. Um, here again, the, the seat can tilt in space and the seat chassis is quite individualized for her. So um, this wheelchair was much more of a challenge. We see the difference towards the first solution. We can see that the tube um, holding the device is curved. Um, that is to make it easier to get the right distance to the user's head uh, and still be sturdy. Um, the problem in this case was not the position of the device or the length of the tube. The problem was to find the right mounting spot as this chair doesn't give many options to mount to. Whenever we have these situations, the people on site do not quite know where to mount to. They call for our support that we deliver with a service that we call the VMS, the Virtual Mounting Service. Um, that's a process um, that we offer free of charge. It basically has very simple steps. We ask um, persons on site to take pictures of the actual wheelchair um, from certain defined viewing angles, including the device and the position of the device, um, where the device needs to be to be operated well. Um, then our team members design a solution virtually on their CAD uh, workstation. Um, so we actually put together the individual elements of a mount um, and put it into the right perspective and Photoshop it directly into the original pictures of the wheelchair so that the end user can see, well, this is how it works on my chair, not on any chair, but we um, take into consideration the different points where we could mount to, the individual position of the device, the weight of the device. Um, and then instead of sending a quotation saying, well, we need the XYZ235 plus the uh, yadi yadi, uh, techy stuff that no one understands, we send them a real life picture with our solution mounted to their chair. And then everybody can actually check this. Um, the caregivers around the client can decide if this will work. Sometimes it turns out that they say, well, it looks good, but this is on the right side and we always feed from the right side uh, during meals. So can we put that on the left side? Uh, so this is a kind of important discussion to get everybody on board who um, will work with the system afterwards. And it works very well with these visualized solution. And when everything is in order um, and um, 
the decision comes to go with that system and the respective funding system or healthcare system agrees, um, we send the solution um, already pre-mounted as far as possible, as far as it still fits into a box, so that um, attaching the system to the respective chair is not an issue. And since we had this individual pictures before, it is very clear how and where to mount it. This is a process that works in 95, 98% of the cases very well. We are very proud of it, that it works so well. It's, we get lots of appraisals for that. And I like to brag about it. Unfortunately, with Nele, it didn't work well. So the attachment points um, that we identified were not as stable as we thought they would be. So the uh, supplying company, the, the, the wheelchair supplier, actually had to do something that we usually would try to avoid. Um, they had to fix something individual, so they welded a part um, to the wheelchair that was a stable base for our mount. This is a very exceptional situation. It happens rarely, but sometimes it does happen. And um, well, this cases like this require quite some planning. It's always a challenge when uh, a wheelchair provider has to deal with something that they don't know. For example, an AAC system or the AAC provider has to care with the, um, has to deal with the wheelchair provider. Usually we as mounting providers are in the middle. So we are familiar with that role to intermediate between different parties. This is our everyday life, basically. Well, after all, after some individualization, um, the mount works quite well on the activity chair of Nele. Um, so we've now seen the outdoor wheelchair, we've seen the indoor wheelchair, but there is also more that's worth having a look. Um, Nele also has a relaxed chair with an individualized um, seat where she likes to spend um, large parts of the day when she's at home. Um, here, she sometimes uses her communication device, but she also likes to work on a stationary PC. Um, you can see that in the picture right there. Um, her PC is also uh, equipped with an eye tracker, so she uses this uh, with her eyes as well. Um, you can see that the work computer or also leisure computer, she like uses it for playing music, playing videos, playing games, um, or writing something. Um, this is attached to a standard office mount, nothing AAC, AT specific. Since um, this PC is stationary, there's no need to detach it, attach it somewhere else, take it to diff different places. Um, this, this can be a, a very simple office solution. But we often have, um, have a situation where the client um, also needs to move that device. So there, there are also specific assistive technology mounting solutions for a desk use or for use on the table. We see another situation where Nela uses her AAC system um, being in her relaxed chair um, and the system is now mounted on a solution that we call a floating floor stand. Here's another picture of that, showing it a little further. So this is a freestanding device, a, a mount standing on the floor with a wide angle at the base. And on the top, there is a floating arm. So this arm is, it has it's an articulated arm that goes up and down and can swing into different directions. And all these movements are doable without having to set any kind of lever or screw. Um, it gets once adjusted to the weight of the device and then it stays with the device there in a floating way, and if, if you just tip it a little bit, it will move into the direction you want it. 
So that's a very easy and intuitive way to make sure that an eye tracker is positioned well. Um, this floor stand is also used as a parking spot for the device. Uh, why does the device need a parking spot? Well, we have to take it into consideration uh, Nela's situation. Um, she lives with personal assistance, 24 hour assistance, which means there are eight to 10 different assistants taking shifts and attending um, Nele um, day and night. And her communication device needs charging uh, after a couple of hours, otherwise it's not available. Now in this um, complex everyday situation with eight or 10 different people working with Nele, um, it is very easy to forget that the device needs to be charged. And it helps greatly to have set routines and to have set places for things so that whoever comes in new into the team learns immediately, oh, when the device is not being used, we put it there and it's getting charged. So this parking spot is actually quite an important um, factor to make sure that uh, the assistive technology that Nela is using is available at the times when she needs it. Um, this is actually one of the points that I want to point out here. Um, working with AAC devices, planning an intervention with um, high-tech equipment, planning mounts, mechanical adaptations, requires a lot of team effort and it requires a lot of conscious uh, thoughts, routines, a bit of planning, lots of communication within the team. And it is important that we always keep in mind um, that um, the availability of a speech generating system is actually the result of a long chain of different steps. Finding the right device with the right accessibility method, defining the right vocabulary, um, making sure that the vocabulary is being maintained and recent and actual, um, positioning the device at the right spot, making sure it is charged at the time when it's thought to be used, making sure that it's always there where the user needs it. All of these are individual steps and you can view it as a chain. And of course, the total strength of the chain is defined by the weakest link. If you leave out one step, if you leave out, for example, some routine to make sure the device is charged, um, the user will end up with times of the day when she wants to use the device, but it's not available. And in the same, um, in the same context, we need to look at these mechanical adaptations, at these positioning and mounting issues they are one part of the solution. If you neglect this one part, even though it's not as shiny and complex and expensive and um, maybe also not as fascinating as a fancy eye tracking device, it has the same relevance. Otherwise, the total solution might not work. Okay, let's um, see a little further. What else? Um, is important in Nela's everyday life. Um, this is a standing device where Nela spends um, 30 or 45 minutes per day um, to make sure that she can stretch her body. In the standing device, she often communicates or reads something. So um, she does use her, her device from there sometimes. Um, but it doesn't require its own mounting system as the standing device is only used indoors and indoors we have this floor stand available and the floor stand is so flexible that it also works with Nela being at a different height. Um, so it does not require its own solution. Um, it just requires the consideration whether it needs an own solution or not in the planning phase. Um, here again, we see Nela in her relaxed chair working with the uh, stationary PC. Um, well, relaxing is one part, um, but even uh, longer times are usually spent in the bed. 
Now, in bed, um, you usually also want to communicate. Uh, in Nele's case, um, she does not use her AAC device frequently in bed. Um, to her, in bed, as long as she's not sleeping. Um, other leisure activities like watching TV are important. Um, however, it was important that there is the, the option of using the AAC device from time to time. Now we see here uh, this bed has been customized for Nele um, with a, a bespoke, it's a, it's a bespoke solution. Um, you can see some large buttons that Nele uses to switch her TV on and off or switch channels. And um, in this customization process of this beautiful wooden bed, there are also two holes for the legs of the floor stand underneath the bed where you can push the floor stand in. So in case that she wants to use the AAC device in bed, she can easily do it using the floor stand. And the floor stand also easily brings the device into a position to be used from lying, from, from a lying position on. Now, looking at the totalness of situations where um, people are at in their home setting, um, there is one situation that is even a little more private than the situation in bed, and this is a bathroom situation. We now see a sanitary chair, um, and although Nele is a tech-savvy AAC user and is also being supported with quite tech-savvy people, and um, they have actually uh, put um, electronic equipment all around her in her home. Um, she has um, consciously decided that she does not want to use her high-tech AAC device in the bathroom setting. Um, however, for many users, this uh, is, is an issue that particularly when they need a lot of care, um, physical care, it is important that they have means to communicate to the caregiver what needs to be done. Or, um, so, uh, and of course it would be possible to also attach a mount to the sanitary chair or find different attachment spots in the bathroom. Of course, you need to uh, watch out for, uh, out for humidity in a bathroom setting. Um, but, you know, for Nail, this is not required. She also has quite good um, body language means to communicate. She's using an I alphabet to indicate starting letter of words and giving cues to her caregivers um, who then co-construct uh, language with her. And she's quite quite good at that um, and the team attending or the her assistance team is uh, stable enough and, and uh, the people are focused enough that um, they also get quite away without the device. Um, now as I mentioned I am in close contact to Nele and um, we as a company get quite a few challenges from this um, very conscious and tech savvy and um, active young lady and her also very technical uh, support uh, team around her. Um, so they challenge us frequently asking for new solutions. Um, so and one of the solutions that they've been asking for that we came up with a prototype um, is that she wanted to use her cell phone in conjunction with her device. Um, so we equipped her with one of the cell phone holders that are part of our standard portfolio. Um, but we found a way to mount this directly to her Toby, um, which is, and she's currently test using it. Um, it seems to work well. Uh, so we have decided that we will soon bring this on the market and make it available for others as well. Um, so this is one of the challenges that we currently, that we always have ongoing that uh, we're asked for uh, specific solutions and um, we usually don't do individual tinkering in one case, but we try to solve this in a way that can be reused by others later on. And this is how we broaden our portfolio of solutions. Um, another important part in 
Nela's independence and in Nela's life is the topic of mobility. Um, so far, we have only seen wheelchairs um, that were manually propelled. Um, she does have a power wheelchair, but so far this power wheelchair has only been operated by a caregiver. Since um, a couple of months before I visited last time, um, this power wheelchair was adapted to um, be uh, independently controlled by Nela herself. So um, what you can see there is a headrest that has controls in there so she can with pushing her head to the headrest control the wheelchair. Um, then there are some other controls uh, like this switch at the side that she can operate with her shoulder. Um, and she's um, currently, or uh, I don't know about right now, but in the, uh, the last time I met her, she was still in a training phase. It went quite well to operate the wheelchair herself, but it was um, demanding. So at that time, for example, um, she was not able to control her wheelchair at the same time as her device. So at this power wheelchair, you currently don't see a mount for the communication device. Um, still, I would like uh, to show this as we are also in this individualization process of the wheelchair control. Um, our products are also being used. Um, as you can see, this uh, head control only works well when it's exactly at the right spot. It needs to be very uh, adjustable. And the adjusting elements um, that the wheelchair suppliers use to individualize the special controls for the power wheelchair um, are frequently parts of Rehadapt, but not exclusively. Here you can uh, also see a uh, photo equipment articulated arm holding um, a button. An interesting aspect here is that you can see there is some uh, soft foam attached to the button because at this position it is uh, quite a risk that uh, Nela does some involuntary head movements and knocks her head quite quite sturdily quite heftily against this button. That of course can hurt um, and is a certain risk and that's a situation that we frequently see that controls are hazardous because of involuntary movements. We have a solution um, that is being used more and more um, that we call the flexback tube. Um, we have tubes that are flexible and of course these kind of tubes are known since ages. We know these uh, gooseneck um, arms for example to make sure that, well they, they avoid injuries by just being well pushing away. But once they have been pushed away, they don't come back. Now the flexback tubes that we have developed together with our British partner SmileSmart, um, this tube flexes back and is a very nice solution in cases where um, you want to make sure nobody gets injured um, with, a, with a control device very close to, for example, the head. So far, we have seen um, different, different solutions all through the daily life of this one user that I'm introducing here, Nela. This has to be seen in the context of many people working together with Nela. And Nela, by the nature of her complex communication needs, has uh, limited capacity to instruct all these team members to make sure that everything, everything works right. So the entire intervention is a great deal of team effort. And this is what I'm advocating here, that you need to have some level of consciousness and teamwork to make solutions fit as well as Nela's solution, to enable this level of independence. Um, as a fun fact, um, the place where Nele lives in Freiburg 
is pretty much the most distant place to the place where her parents live and where she was born. She was born on a small island in the North Sea, uh, like a Channel Island, and now she lives in the Black Forest. That's uh, the equivalent to um, the distance between Cornwall and the Scottish Highlands in, in Great Britain. Um, and um, she lives a very independent life, and this is only possible when all the solutions that are created to support her are being maintained. Um, then there are certain role definitions. So, for example, um, all the mounts that we produce um, have some mechanical strain. There are connections, there are screws, bolts, levers. And when Nela goes hiking, um, these connections have a certain strain and every now and then they need to be tightened. Every now and then you have to make sure that you kind of grease the uh, receiving connector to put the device onto the wheelchair. Um, it needs to be checked that the things are in order and within a large team and also a team with a certain fluctuation um, you have to make sure that you define roles, who is responsible for which part. You have to make sure that you are training the new team members, as you can think. Uh, a team of eight to ten persons means that one person in this team is always new. Um, most of the people working as personal assistant for Nele are students. Uh, Freiburg is a university town and these students usually don't stay very long at these jobs, maybe two, three semesters and then they are moving on. Uh, so there is always somebody new, always somebody to be trained up. So not only you have to define these roles and identify what maintenance is needed, uh, you also have to make sure that you put this into a um, transportable format so that you can pass it on to the next team member and train them up. And this works best with certain routines. For example, just as a summary, we've seen the two different wheelchairs and we have seen that these two different wheelchairs have two different mounts. These mounts are always stored at the respective wheelchair so they don't get mixed up. Um, one could, since all our components are interchangeable and are designed to fit to each other, uh, it would be easy, easily possible to put the curved mount onto the outdoor wheelchair. Um, that wouldn't hurt too much, it would still hold, but it would bring the device into a slightly wrong position. And Nela would be suffering by not having the most ergonomic way to uh, access her device. Um, another example is the charging the parking station to make sure that the device is being charged. So routines are important to keep everything going. Now, as a summary, I would like to point out that the entire process, as well as the entire intervention, identifying the right vocabulary, identifying the device, identifying access, um, also the mechanical parts is a structured and planned process. And it requires a certain level of consciousness. Um, you need to analyze the situation. What is needed? Well, there are different wheelchairs, indoors, outdoors. There is a seating positioning um, system for the relaxed time. There is a work situation. There is a bed situation. There might be a standing device. Uh, you might to take care of bathroom situation. Then there is something that I didn't mention before. Nele is using a uh, the Dutch term of it is Rollfietzen. It's like a, a bicycle, bicycle wheelchair combination. Um, the next step is to make, uh, to give, deliver a mount for that as well, that she can operate her AAC system when being in this bicycle solution. There's always something that needs to be taken care of. Um, it only works well when there is good, proper communication in the team. It requires some constant observation. Have we really spotted all situations? Is everything working well? Has anything changed? There's always a next wheelchair. There's always the next um, seat in a certain wheelchair system. 
There might be the next device with a different weight or a different size. Um, you want to develop and you want to continuously try to improve the situation because every little step makes life a little bit easier. To do so, it's very helpful to have a good partner at your side. Um, and if you're working with mounting specialists, like our partners from Smile Smart Technology, um, like ourselves, um, the chance is high that you get a proper outcome. Uh, think of the image of uh, the chain. To have the full solution, you need a reliable chain and the strength of the entire chain is defined by the weakest link. Even though other parts of high-tech AAC interventions might be more attention grabbing than mounting, which is sometimes considered to be dull or difficult, or maybe there are safety concerns. But remember, don't, um, don't ignore a single uh, link, otherwise your chain might break or not work out as well as it could. Well, um, that brings me to the end of this talk. I would like to thank you for your attention. I'm very happy to get in touch with you. If you have any questions, just email me, uli.ehlert at rehadab.com. And, well, thank you for your attention. Bye-bye.